Hey everybody, welcome to True Crime Paranormal with the Psychic Sisters. I'm Christy Brower here with my sister, co-host, and partner in crime, Katie Weaver. Hey Katie. Hello. How's it going? It's going good. Another bright sunny day. Wow. We are like, oh, is it summer? It seems it's like it's summer. Is it summer? Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Is it going to snow again? It might don't snow ask. again. Don't ask. We don't know. We do. <laughs> don't even say the word. That is a four letter. That's the only four letter word I really care about right now is that one. So don't say it. Okay. All right. No, we do. We are, are having beautiful weather. I've, I've mm -hmm. had a real surreal kind of day. Both of my dogs and one of my cats had dental surgery today, which you can only imagine what that bill was. Ooh, oh, I'll bet. Triple but whammy. Now, we've got two drunk dogs and a drunk cat wandering around our house doing weird stuff. And, you know, like it takes them a while to come out of that uh, anesthesia and not have this weird glassy eyed staring off into the sunset look on their faces. <laughs> it's just, mm -hmm. it's been, it's been a weird day. Can I just mm -hmm. say at one point, my little dogs, they're dachshunds. And so they were outside and I started to hear them howling. Mm -hmm. I mean, hounds, they can howl. I have mm -hmm. never heard either one of them do it. I looked out the door and they're both standing next to each other, staring off into the distance, howling very quietly together. I was like, <laughs> Some kind of shared hallucination going on out here, or what? <laughs> when I opened the door, it like broke the you know broke the uh, trance or whatever they were in, and then they came running in the house. But I was like, what the hell? Was that? <laughs> oh my goodness! So that's Got a my little day. bit of bonkers business going on over there for sure. Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh! So weird. So weird. Um. I don't know if you guys have ever had your pets, you know, have like little surgeries like that, but man, they all respond a little differently. Mm -hmm. My kitty, she has eyes like saucers right now. I think they, the stuff they give cats, I think they hallucinate or at least mine do. Mm -hmm. And uh, they left the IV in my cat's leg. Yeah. That's really confounding. It. Yeah. And so we just took it out and wrapped it up tight. So it wouldn't bleed, but. It did yeah. bleed everywhere while we we're trying to get it out, you know, and we're, you've got this crazy hallucinating cat and we're trying to hold on to her leg. To... Yeah. Yeah. It's been a Monday and it's Tuesday. So I yeah. know, but it sure does feel like Monday. It's Holiday weekends just ruin me. You know, I'm so confused. I don't know what day it is. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> it's right. I know it's kind of weird, but we wanted to bring you this case mostly because a lot of you have requested that we talk about it yeah. and many of you will find this familiar um, but we did want to share it because we are doing um, missing and murdered indigenous women cases and this uh, applies in that this was missing murdered indigenous children so we are talking about and i'm sure you've heard about this the 215 children found buried near the Kamloops Indian Reservation, in Indian Residential School in Canada. Yeah. And they did find children as young as three. Um, okay. They found them with ground penetrating radar. Yeah. And as far as they can tell, these deaths were undocumented. So yeah. these children's families did not know what happened to them. We don't know how these kids died. No. It just, it's, it's absolutely, it's horrifying. Yeah. For some people, it's vindicating because they've been saying these things about the Indian residential schools for so long. Yeah. And, and, and to have some truth of that is a good thing mm -hmm. um but it's also tremendously sad oh, to think that this went on horrifying it's just horrifying yeah yeah and you know we <coughs> we have heard about um the residential schools here in idaho you know we've heard stories and mm -hmm. people who had family members who went to them but i don't know 
that I 100% understood what they were. Yeah. So the main reason for this conversation, I feel like besides, you know, just acknowledging what's happened in Canada Mm -hmm. and, you know, sending a lot of love out to the survivors, you know, family members, you know, this, that school was around for a long time. It started in 1890, I think. And so Mm -hmm. it was around for a really long time. Oh yeah. Um, But there are still people who went to that school who are living. Oh yeah. um, You know, have family members who went to that school and there's a, there's a lot of work being done for the survivors of these schools. Mm -hmm. But it's really important to understand. And this, this school is Canadian, um, but the history is just as ugly in the U S these schools they were called at one point Native American boarding schools or yeah. Indian residential schools. We heard residential schools around here or just Indian schools. Mm-hmm. Um, they started in the early 19th century and their primary goal was to civilize or assimilate Native American children and youth yeah. into Euro American culture. Yep while at the same time destroying and vilifying Native American culture. They weren't allowed yeah. to speak their language. They weren't allowed to practice their culture. They no. were punished for doing those things. Mm-hmm. They weren't yeah. only allowed to speak English. They had to be Christian because mm-hmm. there's a huge religious element to all of this. Oh, yeah, because most of these schools were operated by the Catholic Church. Yes. At least in the beginning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they were all they were always religious, even if they weren't the Catholic Church specifically, they were often um, Christian missionaries of some sort. Yeah. Yeah. The schools a lot of times started on reservations. But literally. People's children. First Nations people's children were stolen. Yeah. And they were taken to these schools. Yeah. And, and they were forced to never given back never given back or given back but had experienced terrible abuse Mm -hmm. physical sexual emotional spiritual abuse um the government actually paid these religious orders to provide this basic education to native american kids so they were supposedly getting like public school basic Uh american basic in you know education but at the same time they were being forced to americanize they were being forced to uh be christian Mm um it's horrifying it's it's unthinkable it's unthinkable it's absolutely unthinkable and it's one of those things that we have to be really sure that we understand and that we remember Because we cannot let these things happen ever, ever again. Because here's here's the problem. First Nations children were treated as though they were less than human. Yeah. They were murdered, raped, physically abused, starved. Starved, yeah. Withheld, medi- they had medical care withheld from them. Mm-hmm. They were treated absolutely horrible. sexually abused. They were sexually abused constantly. Yes. Um, that was part of the dark underbelly, you know, is that these children were being sexually abused. There was no accountability. No. There was no accountability to anyone. No. So the, those in charge did whatever the hell they wanted. They did. There's Why a certain is it that when vulnerable children are left in the care of adults one of the things that always happens to them is sexual abuse yeah why and because why there are predators to religion yeah in this as we know we grew up with that mm-hmm. in our own family and in the mormon mm-hmm. the mormon church has a huge problem with sexual abuse mm-hmm. yeah but I do feel like that in just reading what I've read and trying to better understand this, because I'm a white girl from Idaho, you know, all I can do is hear other people's stories and validate. One of the things 
that I've read over and over again is that people were not believed when they reported these kinds of things. Yeah. Women were not believed when they reported these kinds of things. Well, sure. Why would the authorities want to believe that? But then they'd have to do something about it. And they didn't want to do something about it. They did not care. No, because this is just more abuse yeah. perpetrated at the hands of white people. Well, it's just, yes, but it's just, it's just more racism. I mean, at the core of it is just the fact that white people thought that they were, and some still do, think that they are superior to every other race. And it was just too much for them to have to care. Yeah, it really was. And they were treated, they treated these children as though they were savages that needed to be civilized. Mm -hmm. That there was something wrong with them mm -hmm. because they didn't behave like white Christian children. Yeah. Oh, I just, oh, this stuff is so hard for me because it's really difficult for me to understand it. Not from the standpoint of what happened or believe it because I 100% do. But, yeah. It is the willingness of human beings to participate in these kinds of things mm -hmm. truly stuns me. Yeah. And particularly, yeah. you know, we were raised Mormons. We were raised as Christians. Mm -hmm. And when you see that these kinds of abuses are so regularly perpetrated by Christians, I mean, I've read all their works. I've read all their, you know. Right. And this shit does not fit into that at all yeah christianity christian christianity has been so twisted it just and i'm not trying to rag on christianity it's just the evidence is so massive mm -hmm. that this kind of stuff came down at the hands of people who were meant to be followers of and you know um teachers of and supporters of of Christianity, I just, it, yeah. it, it is beyond me. People who were supposed to emulate Jesus Christ treated children this way. I know. I, I don't understand it either. I don't know if I'll ever totally get my head around it. No. I did read a, a sweet little Facebook post by Jeff Gibbs. He is, yes. uh, he's a journalist. And in 2017, he did a piece on a woman named Hada Gwai. Yeah, this is a, a statement from Hayda. She said, I am now 73 years old. I was at Indian residential school from ages 11 to 15. I had to work in the infirmary where there were many sick and hungry children. I'd steal food like peanut butter and bread to feed them. A lot of kids died there. I had to handle the dead children, wrapping them to be buried. Once I got caught speaking my native language, I wasn't aware my language was different. My punishment was having four fingernails pulled out. Oh my God. At residential school, we all received numbers. I was known as 702, but my name is Svenia. It's an Ojibwe name that means on my way. For many years now, I've worked as an advocate for abused children. I started a school for indigenous kids in Vancouver called Spirit Rising Cultural Survival School. So, you know, and not that that's a, a surprising story, you know, but it, I think it just helps to put all of this in a little bit more focus that not only were the children in these places just terribly neglected and abused, but they also were taking care of each other. Yes. They yeah. were taking care of each other. Children were working in the infirmary, for God's sake, you well, know. Dealing with the dead bodies of children yeah. who passed. And one of the big problems here for parents is, one, they didn't necessarily know where their kid even went. Two, if they were First Nations, they might not speak English. Yeah. And so how did they get help? How did they communicate with the school? They they didn't. This, their no. kids were kidnapped and stolen from them. Yeah. Bottom line, this totally. was kidnapping. Yeah. And all of these children in Canada, these remains, and of course, we're expecting that there will be many more, you know, now that they've 
you know, found these bodies with ground penetrating radar, you know that a bunch of those old schools are going to all get checked. You bet. In Canada and in the U.S. Oh, you bet. And we're going to find way, way more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Without a doubt. I can only imagine the way sickness ripped through these schools. Oh, yeah. Because they were overcrowded. I would imagine that they didn't heat them well because, again, they weren't taking good care of these kids. No. They were probably drafty and had bad ventilation. These were children that were susceptible, more susceptible than other kids to all kinds of disease. Right. And they weren't being fed properly. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, it was just, just it's a classic or, or just a, you know, a perfect storm for illness to rip through there constantly. Besides, and with, you know, medical care being very nil. Yeah. And then add all of the other injustices on top. Their spirits were broken. Their hearts were broken. Yeah. 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 And, you know, we, well, see, we see evidence of it in our own community. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that our First Nations people locally, mm -hmm. many of them struggle a lot. Mm -hmm. They come from families where, you know, older generations went to Indian school. Mm -hmm. They've lost their languages. They've lost their cultures. Mm -hmm. um, it It's just one other form of white colonialism and genocide. Yeah. yeah. And it, you know, I know we're two white girls reporting on this. And so it's, it's difficult, I think, for us to fully understand what that even meant for these folks. Right. But I can certainly have empathy for it. And I can certainly stand up and use my voice to make sure it never happens again. Yeah. Yeah. But it is yeah. an absolutely yeah. shameful time mm. in, yeah. uh, in America. Yeah, absolutely. It, I do think it's interesting that this is coming to the surface now when the topic mm. of race is really... I don't want to say hot button right now. I guess it kind of is, but it, it's really prevalent right now. And so, you know, this is a good time for this conversation to come to the surface. I think it it's is. a good time for these kinds of atrocities to get some light so that we can continue to work on what's gone wrong and try to do better in the future and to also get real about our real history. Because yeah. There are also powers that be right now that are trying desperately to whitewash history yet again and stop teaching accurate historical stuff in schools about Native Americans, about slavery, you know, about various things. You know, you probably heard it being argued about critical race theory yes. and the big boogeyman, you know, but, you know, and I don't want this to turn into a political production, but maybe it just is by nature, you know, but it's not politics to me. This is just human rights. This is, right. You know, this but is so humanity. As politics, that's that's what we come down to with it. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, we can't allow any more of this. Uh, the winners write the history books and we don't we're not adequately reporting. I knew about these schools because of where I live and what I've heard and what I've been told. And our grandparents growing up where they did, they mm -hmm. had Native Americans around them. You know, my grandma used to talk about that when her babies were little, that there was a, an Indian lady that used to come and peek in the window and she'd see her peeking in the window and she'd open the door and she was always had two or three little kids with her and a baby and papoose on her back. And she didn't speak any English. And my grandma certainly didn't speak her language, but she'd always give her some bread and some honey, you know, and they'd take it and be on their way, you know. But there was just kind of this mom to mom, you know. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like part, you're, part a, thing. you're a mother, you understand. Yeah. Uh -huh. And she said for a couple of years, she came by every so often and she'd just always open the door and give her what she could because she knew they were hungry. And, you know, she wasn't screaming from the rafters for someone to come do something about this woman. You know, she was giving her food because she obviously needed it. But, uh, you know, and so I guess we've kind of had a different take. I know 
better than to read comments on these stories because I think I would be horrified by what uh, the justifications from people about this stuff. Mm. But one of the things that really gets to me is that I have had a lot of friends share this story on social media and say, I had no idea. Yeah. I had no idea that this had, was a thing. How? Well, because it wasn't taught to you. I mean, you can, right. we don't know what we don't know. But right. these are the kinds of things in our history that we have to ferret out, that we have to talk about, that we have to be brave enough to look in the face. Yeah. We can't let this kind of history just be swept under the rug anymore. No, Our humanity can't. can't afford it. No, we can't. We can't at all. And and it, I think it's up to all of us who are adults now. You know, there's a lot of work being done to improve public education and change that. And of course, people are going completely bonkers about it here in our lovely state of Idaho. Other states yeah. are doing a much better job. Um, yeah. But what we can do is we can go out and we can educate ourselves, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you don't know about the Indian residential schools and the Indian boarding schools, <coughs> excuse me, yeah. <coughs> please go do your research and learn about them. Yeah. Read about what happened in your community. Did you have one near you? Yeah. And what went on with it? Read about the survivors. Yeah. Read their stories mm -hmm. and believe them. Yeah. I feel like we have a real problem in the U.S. now, now more than ever, that we don't believe people when they re when they report their own experiences. Yeah. And we see that in sexual assault, child sexual abuse. You know, we're seeing it in these cases where kids were running away and telling people these terrible things are happening to me at this school, and people just take them back and leave them there. Uh -huh. You know, nobody did anything. Nobody cared at all. And our first step is to see all people as humans, all people yeah. as equal human beings. And to recognize that these things have happened and we need to understand them to make sure that they don't ever, ever happen again. Yeah. And that's why this matter. Yeah, we many, many people shared with us the story about the school, the Kamloops school and what they found and um, you know, they've vowed to identify as many of these bodies as possible so yeah. that family members can be notified so that if yes. their, you know, child just never came home and they never knew why. Yeah. Then this would, you know, this would at least be an answer. Well, it will at least attach that child to the nation from whence they came, yeah. you know, from what, what tribe they came from. Um yeah, and in, in that way, this will at some point be a DNA for the win case. Right. Because we are going to see children uh, at least matched up to where they should have been. And and yes. that is something. Yeah. It is something. It is a start. I mean, there's only so much that can be done now. Yeah. Other than learning from this experience and not turning away from it. Yeah. And I think that's a hard <laughs> one. It's sad. It's heartbreaking. As a white person, it's embarrassing that yet again... You know, our white ancestors pulled some serious shit mm -hmm. and that all that we can do is learn about it and understand it and make sure it never happens again. Yeah. And yeah. make sure that we work for equality. Yeah. And, and support work like this. Yes. The Canadian government probably could have buried this. They mm -hmm. probably could have buried this and never let this story see the light of day. Never let the public know what they knew, right. what, what they found. They frankly could have probably made the whole thing go away, but they didn't. They were brave enough to say, this is what we know. Yeah. And I'm glad that they did. I'm glad they allowed it to the story to be told. We, we, right. we have to support that and keep letting these stories be told. We do. We have to keep, they have to keep being told. We have to keep hearing them mm -hmm. so that we never, ever forget that these children were kidnapped from their own families. Mm -hmm and beaten and abused and many of them killed. It's yeah. just, it's overwhelming, but we have to acknowledge it and face it. And that's yeah. that's the best thing that we can do with talking about it is to do just that. Yep. And so we encourage you to go learn about the Indian schools that came. I always wanna say Indian school because that's what people say here in Idaho, 
but the Native American boarding schools, Indian residential schools, Indian schools, whatever you wanna say, go learn about them. Go learn about them in your area. Mm -hmm. Learn about what happened in your community. Find out if there are survivors groups in your area because there might be, there are survivors groups all over the place and find out how you can support them. Yep, yep. And we will do the same. I'm mm -hmm. sure that this is the first of many, uh, you know, as we work on MMIW cases that we will come back to these cases we as well and keep we working on them as well. So we're working on a an episode that will come out next week that is about three First Nations people from the reservation near where we live, who um, two of one is missing, and two bodies have been found in bodies of water nearby, mm -hmm. and they're being determined to be suicides as usual, with no of course, yeah, investigation. So we're going to share those cases with you next week, and talk to you about you know I. I have a plan about some things I want to do to rattle a few um, local cages as far as like news is concerned mm -hmm. and try to get someone to give a damn about this. Yeah. And I don't know that these cases are related. They may not be, but they have a similar thread running through them. Yeah. And uh, all we can do is try to bring awareness in our community and try to hold officials accountable. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but we will definitely be back with more information as we go along. But please feel free to share with us um, on the comments of this video if you're watching this on YouTube. And if you're not and you're listening to it on a podcast, come over to YouTube and comment. Tell us what you knew about uh, the Indian schools or if you knew anything about them at all. And maybe what you find out about your own communities. We'd like to know. Definitely. Yeah. Well, this is our Wednesday show. Yeah. We will be back tonight with um, our live stream for case updates here on YouTube and Facebook. Mm -hmm. And that's at 7 p.m. Mountain. Mm -hmm. And then we will be back on Thursday with the Psychic Hour on also at 7 p.m. Mountain. And that is also a live stream. And yeah. it's marching orders. So we will be go doing a reading for each sign yeah. for the month. Lots of good yeah. stuff coming. Most definitely. If you want to send us a case, go to truecrimeparanormalpodcast.com and you fill out the form and send that over to us. We love getting your suggestions. We try to cover as many things as you ask us to. So we do. You guys know it. We are True Crime Paranormal. Thanks for being here. Take care.